Hey everyone, welcome to my first dev vlog for my horror mystery game that I've started working on. It's a game I've been trying to do for quite some time now. I've just never found myself having enough time to get off the ground. I keep joining game champs and I keep running out of time. So I decided to take my time and actually just work on this project on the side. It's one of three other projects I'm working on. As you can see, the first thing I needed to do was to decide what my character for my game was going to look like. Now I'm still a bit indecisive, I'm not too sure if it's going to be a first person or a third person horror game. But I've, as you can see, I've gone to MetaHuman and I've used it to design my character called Ethan. So he'll be the main character in this game that I'll be working on and his goal is to try and solve a family mystery. Right, so once I got my MetaHuman generated and added to my project, I had to simply just enable a couple of plugins restart my engine and from here I can start working on my actual game. So the first thing I need to do is take my Ethan blueprint and I need to transfer some of the actual assets across to my third person character. So first thing I need to do is obviously take across the, the actual body itself along with the hair. As you can see I bring it across quite nicely and quite seamlessly in fact. A uh, couple of orientation adjustments I gotta make. You know, I gotta just test out a few things as well. I realized that the character uh, parts aren't connecting really well, so I had to use the leader pose component just to make sure that they're bended in quite nicely. As you can see, it looks pretty good. Only thing left now is I had to work on the animation. That wasn't working so well. So I replaced the animation with the ABP Mini and just changed the actual route for the animation and that solved my problem. Once I was done, I just made a couple of adjustments. I decided that I was going to do this in true first person mode. So you can see I'm busy working on the actual camera itself. I need to just work on the orientations as well because it was clipping into my actual character. Once I got that sorted, I had a really nice looking first person um, view for me to use in a third person with a third person character. So I was quite proud of that. It gives me the opportunity to actually revert to a third person character if I wanted to. With that done, I need to start working on my interact system because I need to obviously interact with items such as torches, uh, batteries. I'm also looking to create a um, inspection system as well, uh, along with a quite a detailed quest uh, system as well. So once I set up my input actions to the actual E key, all I need to do now is set up a ray trace so that I could interact with it appropriately. I connected this to my actual uh, camera itself. Uh, if you're doing a first-person controller, uh, a game will be a first-person controller. I used my camera, my follow camera from a third person. Changed a few coordinate settings there, set it up, and my interaction system was working just fine. Let's have a look and see. At this point, I realized that I actually didn't set the unit distance. <laughs> So it wasn't really working so well. But once I figured it out, I set it to a default of 150. I was able to interact through ray tracing with specific items. Next step was, of course, adding a flashlight. Now I went to Sketchfab for that. Uh, so you're more than welcome to have a look at Sketchfab for your free assets going forward. In your career in game development, there's quite a bit available. Once I chose my flashlight, all I needed to do was position it correctly in my actual character. So I had to make some modifications and justifications. Now this isn't the final way in which I'm going to do this. I am going to work around a few other options because I do ideally want to equip it to the hand so you can actually see the animation of the arm lifting when you're selecting the actual uh, flashlight itself. I keep saying torch because I'm from South Africa and that's what we call it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for the sake of international relations, I'll try and stick to flashlights. So yeah, I had to obviously work around with it a bit and it was quite uh, painful for me because there were quite a few things bugging me with the system but I didn't want to get bogged down too much with it. I also had to sort out the uh, shadow system as well because it was casting a bit of a strange shadow. Once that was done, I started working on my actual lighting option itself. So I started working on a couple of functions, my flashlight on, off, activate and so forth. In order for me to get this working properly, I needed to first do a few checks and I needed to make sure that I actually had my flashlight on me and that it could actually be activated. And for the lights, I was going to use a point light. So I added a point light to my project, to my mesh, 
I dimmed the lights a bit and I think I got a pretty decent looking uh, flash, uh, flashlight working uh, for this specific scenario. So after a few more tweaks, again just fid fiddling with the uh, shadow options, I decided to actually work on the functionality itself. Now I've, I've added options to include clicking sounds and so forth, which I'll work, th work towards later on in my dev vlog. Um, right now my main goal is just to try and get the actual flashlight working and making sure that you can pick it up. So that's what I did next. I worked on a couple more functions, created a few uh, more uh, blueprint actors where I could actually create a pickup in the world for my character to actually pick up the flashlight. So once I got that sorted and I applied my actual uh, blueprint interfaces to my specific uh, blueprints, it worked without any issues. As you can see yeah, I'm just sort of demonstrating how it looks in the world, size-wise, and there we go, I picked it up all correctly. A few more modifications had to be made, a couple of tweaks, op option to add sound for turning it on and off, and of course just to destroy the actor thereafter. With that done, the next thing to work towards was going to be the battery system itself. Now there's a few things I wanted to do with the battery system, and I wanted to obviously have a widget for that, as well as have a option for the battery to drain and once you pick up the battery it would replenish so that's what i did next again using sketchfab i imported a simple little battery i made some further modifications to my code as you can see i'm just moving things across now to different functions i figured if i'm going to make a more elaborate system which i'm planning to do and i don't want to spoil that just yet i need to do this correctly and rework a bit of my code so a bit of a fly fly of the moment uh, decision but I did it nonetheless and I was able to create two functions where you could turn the flashlight on and off and pick it up as well as you can see there I made a bit of a mistake initially I couldn't get it working because I'd swapped my two different um, functions around but with that being said and after it worked I started moving to on towards towards my actual um, UI for the battery itself using a progress bar in a simple orange color, I was able to add it to my actual uh, viewport so that once I played, it, was, it, would be, it would just show without any issues. After that, I had to work on the actual battery drain functionality itself. Uh, so a couple of checks that I had to do with that is to first of all, make sure that I cannot pick up any batteries unless I have a flashlight in my actual hand. And then if I were gonna pick up my flashlight, and then my, my batteries, it needed to replenish them. But at the same time, my actual uh, battery had to decrease. So I started working on that next uh, with my NSAC, uh system in place. I was able to apply it to the battery so you could actually collide with the battery itself and pick it up. It would automatically be added to your inventory, which we're still gonna obviously flesh out a bit and it would actually destroy in the world so i'm just doing a couple of tests here making sure that my logic is right and as you can see i encountered a couple of errors there uh, a couple of silly mistakes on my side i eventually got it working i figured out that i was doing things sort of back to front that's just kind of how my brain works unfortunately is i start from the end and then i kind of break it down but i eventually fixed it uh, without having any issues it took me about three tries to be fair and as you can see on the screen it started to work so i was quite happy with that the next thing i needed, needed to work on was actually the battery drain itself and being able to make the drain look really smooth so i had to do a couple of calculations there a bit of division just to make sure that when the progress bar depletes it actually looks good and it doesn't look all bulky and chunky so the last thing you want to do in a game is every half a second or every second you you, you lose like of like it's like a twelfth of your actual progress bar it just doesn't look good you want your battery to drain naturally and you want it to be able to replenish it properly so i very quickly worked out my calculations and as you can see on screen i was quite happy with that and how it looked so once that was done i thought to myself it was pretty good progress for the first day and i had to spend a bit of time cleaning up my code adding some comments to better better understand my actual code that I've been using. Let me show you what the game looks like now in, in actual real time 
and you can have an idea of where I'm going to go from here. Okay, so let's test this out in real time. So as you can see on my screen at the moment, my widget's already showing my actual flashlight and how much battery power I have. I'm going to work on changing this later on, don't worry about that, it'll only appear once you pick up the flashlight itself. But just testing out everything I've done in this video, I'll walk up to one of these batteries and I press F, it just basically tells me, press E at least, it'll say, hey, you need a flashlight. So it's kind of just warning me that it's point is picking this up. So I'll find the flashlight, here we go, press F, and if I just go to the corner here, towards the wall, you'll see my battery starts draining slowly. So if I walk up to these batteries and I just spam my E key until I get an actual cursor here, let's go right, <laughs> actually spam it, you'll notice my battery replenishes itself. So this is quite an empty little system, I'm quite happy with the progress I've made so far on this dev blog. I've been able to add a third person uh, character mesh using meta human I've been able to set up a moderately close uh, first person true first person perspective and I've got a nice little flashlight system in place for my horror game one of the fundamentals all right so this wraps up this dev blog and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next one where I expand a little bit more on my environments as well as my functionality